Hello? 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 No. Hello? Really? People are, uh, here. Oh, no. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Oh, awesome. Cool. Wow, I can't tell that at all. Yeah. All right, cool. How are you guys doing? Um, nice. Love that 10 a.m. energy. Um, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah. Um, who here? First event of JS Fest? Anyone? Anyone else? Nice. Okay, nice. I, uh, I just got back from Stockholm, so I haven't been to anything, and I'm jet lagged as hell. So if I start like speaking Swedish or like pass out up here, that's that's on me. Um, but yeah, this is the Node way, and uh, let's get into it. Um, as uh, Michael mentioned, my name's Fred. I uh, I'm on Twitter at Fred K Shot. I write about Node on my blog. I tweet about Node, and I work with Node at Box. So definitely pretty into it right now. And the kind of question I've been asking myself over the last three months, but really kind of the last year is, what is the node way? Has anyone else heard this phrase kind of thrown around? Um, yeah, there you go. Um, one person, yes. Um, it's, it's definitely not like written about, like there isn't anything really about it, at least that I've been able to find ever, but it's this phrase that's kind of thrown around, so I've been kind of trying to wonder what that is. Um, to give you an example, NPM mentioned it in a blog post that uh, the node way is building lots of small single purpose modules. Um, it's a pretty common kind of way to use, but also Step, this control flow library, mentioned that it's providing control flow the node way, so a little bit different. And then Isaac wrote some documentation on a package about how a callback gets called with error and data, as is the node way. And even more cryptically, the node way handed down from the ancient times of node 0.3. Um, this is kind of tongue in cheek because the question was called node modules is the name of my deity slash arch rival and a forbidden word in my religion, can I configure NPM to not use it? Um, <laughs> and the answer is no, but still, even kind of tongue in cheek, it's, it's being used and I've been trying to find out really what does this mean? Um, what is the node way? It's this kind of philosophy, these guiding principles, but they're kind of, kind of unknown and people just kind of throw around this, this phrase. Um, I think most people understand the broad strokes of it, like small modules over large monoliths, um, asynchronous code over blocking code, but once you get into the kind of finer points and ask people to kind of dig into that, it gets a little more muddled. And um, then I I'm, I'm, was one of the worst defenders of this. I would throw this phrase around everywhere and I didn't really know what it meant. Um, and it really wasn't until I started working at Box. You know, I'd worked on projects before with Node. I'd, I'd built a few applications, a few servers. I could definitely, I was confident. I could test, I could, could write code, but I'd, I would find myself kind of making these mistakes and it wasn't until I'd written this entire file that I was like, oh shit, this is terrible. Um, you know, callbacks were all over the place. Like just, I didn't know what I was doing until it was, it was done and it was done poorly. So that's kind of where I was uh, 2013 when I started at Box and we were starting to look at Node um, for kind of the next generation of our web app as a kind of successor to our PHP monolith. And so there's a nice little icon of me. Um, and at the time, you know, as we were kind of trying to build out and investigate what this would look like. We started talking to all these kind of really smart people, these really smart teams. We went out to uh, Yahoo and talked to Dave Glass, um, the guys at PayPal behind Kraken, uh, LinkedIn, and Adam Crabtree. Uh, we talked to all these people, and there's this kind of like just sense of like, oh shit, these guys, these guys get it. Like the stuff that we'd been doing, the stuff that I'd been writing, like it was, it wasn't that they were smarter, they just had a better grasp of what they were doing. Um, kind of the way that they talked about what they were working on and the way they wrote code and the way they talked about that code, it was just kind of like, oh, they get it. Um, so here was me and here was them and I was kind of just frustrated that like, oh, I wish like there was a way for an, someone who's not on a team and not a part of a big company to kind of, to get there. Because it wasn't about being smarter, it was just kind of about having a grasp of the, no, of the language and the framework greater than just going through tutorials or, you know, it was only trial and error was basically the only other way to get there that I could see. Um, so over the next year, kind of as I worked, I, uh, nice. I, uh, I started kind of just writing about all the cool stuff we did at Box, all the stuff that I couldn't find anywhere else, all the problems we were running into, um, testing, um, module design patterns, but also like digging into Node and like what happens when you call require, um, you know, what happens when it loads, um, hacking Node so that you could require an MP3 and get back an actual module with like play and pause. Um, just kind of digging into like the kind of gnarly parts of it. and. Yeah, and there was nothing really out there like that, but this was like a year ago, and in the last year it's gotten better, but there's still just like little parts of the same overall puzzle. So in the last three months, I've kind of focused, taken a step back and focused on the greater picture of what is the node way and um, kind of what is the overall philosophy 
because that scratched my itch, but it didn't really help anyone else. You know, little bits and pieces, that doesn't really get you there. Um, so what do we talk about when we say the node way? Um, I kind of broke down this philosophy, the, this, this, these guiding principles as I came to understand them into three sections, uh, structure, async, and community. Um, there are about 15, 15 points in all, but I mean, I don't have too much time, so I'll just go over the basic ones. Um, structure being that node really doesn't provide you that much in terms of structure. It really kind of leaves you on your own, um, which is powerful, but also kind of scary, especially as you start out. Um, what is a good module? What is a good file? And then what is a good application? You know, how can you stop yourself from making easy mistakes? Um, async uh, is the reason most of us really find the, language, or the framework. Um, why most of us start using Node is for those kind of powerful async uh, just ways of doing things. But it's also kind of the trickiest part of Node. Um, it's definitely the thing that I got tripped on the most when I started, and everyone else who I've kind of brought on board our team, it's easily the most kind of sticking point as you get started. So how do you not make the same mistakes, not end up in callback hell? Um, how do you just do better? And then uh, community. Um, I would bet anyone a million dollars that it is impossible to write Node in a vacuum. Um, just impossible. You, you need the community. You're going to find yourself on GitHub, on NPM, um, installing things, reading documentation. There's no way around that. Um, NPM and the ecosystem and the community are all a part of Node, and Node is a part of that. So how does that influence the framework and the, and the work we do? So, um, so just a kind of quick overview of each of these three points. Um, there's a lot more of it on uh, the website that I've kind of put up to go through this, which I haven't really shown anyone, so I think this is like me announcing it. Um, but I'll include, yeah, it's, it's not ready, be gentle. But um, uh, I'll include a link to that at the end. And uh, so let's talk about structure. Um, like I said, Node really doesn't give you much. Um, it's basically just you tell Node to run a file, and from that, you, and you know, run a file with one module object. Um, it really doesn't give you much, but from that, you can create these huge, or maybe not huge, but powerful applications. Um, so, so how do you kind of stop yourself from shooting yourself in the foot? Um, this is what most people mean when they say the node, the node way, or at least one of the main kind of two things. Um, build small, single-purpose modules. Um, the reasons for this are, are many. Um, I think one of the biggest ones, one of the things that kind of struck me the most is that, especially coming from the front end, you use jQuery, you use underscore, you use these big libraries that do everything for you because that's kind of what you want. You want to add one file and then you're good. Then you have everything you need. But with JavaScript and all the flexibility it provides and Node and the kind of module loading system and then NPM and that entire ecosystem, you don't really, you don't really have to do that anymore. You can actually just choose the tools that you want. Um, so in that kind of world, it makes sense to just build these smaller tools, these smaller uh, libraries, helpers. And then you're just able to have so much more freedom around those. You can plug them in, take them out, replace them, update them, all without having to worry about you know, this entire other library and the rest of the things that you're doing when you do that one thing. Um, like I can't imagine replacing jQuery in a front end code base. Like it would just be nuts. But replacing one small little helper is super easy. Um, and you know, replacing it with something better, upgrading it, or what have you. Um, so yeah, choose the right tool for the job. Definitely don't just spring for some big thing because you're lazy. It, it will save you time, and it will just make the community better if you do that. Um, there's a kind of caveat to that kind of don't just build, don't build small, uh, there's a caveat to building small modules, which is don't get carried away. Um, it's really easy to kind of take this to the extreme and be like, every function is its own module. I'm going to put it up on NPM, um, which is awesome. I mean, all the more power to you. But at the same time, are you really helping yourself? Um, are you helping the community? Uh, you, it's very easy to look at a thousand line JavaScript file and be, oh, this is too much. Let's just move all these helper functions into helpers.js. And there you go, I've cut my file in half. But I would argue that you haven't actually reduced complexity at all. You've just sharded it, more or less. You've moved around all this code. And now, as a developer, you have to move in between files to work with them. You have to check helpers.js and grok it um, for whatever you're trying to find, uh, for whatever bug you're trying to chase. So it really makes it harder on yourself to do that. Um, there, if there's a benefit to it that you see, if someone else would like to use it, if you see it being used within your own code base, by all means, please do it. But for the most part, there should really be a benefit to doing it other than just smaller files. The purpose is single purpose, is simpler modules, um, not just smaller files. Um, let's talk about async. Async is the reason most of us come to Node. Um, it's definitely the reason it was invented, or the biggest purpose was to kind of, instead of this multi-threaded world of 
you know, a Rails server having 20 different open connections, and each one as it waited was just locked. Um, the original problem was how do we solve that? How do we make something that can be highly concurrent and can do other things while it's waiting for database calls, API calls? Um, and so that's kind of the, the selling point almost. But at the same time, it's also, uh, it's also very tricky. So you have to be careful. You have to leverage I.O. whenever you can. That's really how you get the most power out of Node. Um, you know, don't write blocking code. Use callbacks. Use whatever you can. Um, this is where you get to kind of squeeze the most out of Node. But at the same time, you have to avoid heavy computation whenever possible. Um, let's say on a, on a normal Rails server, like, the, like what I mentioned before, you want to parse this giant JSON blob um, or giant blob of text into JSON. All of a sudden, on Rails, that's easy. You basically, one thread is doing that, and it's chugging along, and all other threads are able to handle all the other requests. But with Node, that's your one thread. And as it's doing that, it, it can't look at anything else. It basically can't handle new requests coming in. It can't send new requests, old requests out. Um, it's kind of stuck while it's doing that. So kind of the biggest problem you'll run into, the kind of most hidden problem, or most common hidden problem, is that you're blocking yourself without even noticing. So avoid that at all, at all times. Offload heavy work to a uh, background worker. Um, just kind of try to avoid it if possible. And then invest in clean async. It's really easy to write bad asynchronous code through no fault of your own, just through, you know, you were in a rush, you didn't know what you were doing, uh, some other developer came in, and then all of a sudden your code base is a mess. It's, it's really easy to do that, but you will pay dividends to invest in actually cleaning up any sort of callback hell mess you see. Um, and the kind of node uh, philosophy and the guiding principles kind of have a few best practices involved. Um, one of them being return early. Um, in front end code, you'll see a lot of these kind of nested if else blocks and conditionals. And while that might make sense in that world, in the world of kind of callbacks and all this nesting, it really kind of benefits you to try and make your code as linear as possible. Try and get out of these statements when you know that you're not going to do anything else. Um, this is a pretty trivial example, you know, the same number of lines on both sides, but you can imagine with different callbacks being called in each and different control being passed to different parts of your application, it really kind of benefits you to have a very linear way through the code. Um, and also, don't be afraid to get help with it. Um, you know, there's a lot of kind of promises versus callbacks or, you know, a lot of flame there, but Really, no matter what you want to get help with, you should, uh, especially as you get into the kind of higher order stuff, like how do you call a bunch of callbacks at once and then finish up when they're all done. Um, you can get a lot of power out of that by just using someone else's well-tested, you know, well-used library uh, instead of writing your own because those bugs are hard to track down. Um, so the async helper module, really good at that. Um, promises are good at that. Whatever you want to use, um, use it. Don't be afraid to get help. And lastly, community. Um, community is a huge part of, of Node. Um, the ecosystem is huge, one of the biggest. Um, is it the biggest now? Yeah, yeah it, way, way, way past all others. So it's this huge kind of ecosystem, and then the community is just so kind of involved with each other. I mean, you're all here. This is awesome. Um, so whenever possible, leverage the ecosystem. Um, or there's a module for that. There's always a module for that. I guarantee you everything you've thought of, there probably exists something. Um, someone has, has already thought of it, they've written it, they've given it a name, and hopefully they've even written tests. Um, hopefully. Big, big if. Um, but yeah, there's, there's no reason that you have to reinvent the wheel every time, especially with such a big ecosystem. That doesn't mean don't if the, if the situation calls for it, but try and reach out to maybe the module owner first, see if you can contribute back to the community what's already there and make everything better um, before going out on your own. Um, also, write out modules for others to use. I think it's really easy, especially in other languages, to get in this world of you're the only person using this. Um, you're, this is your team's code, and that's it. And they all know this one thing that you've learned two years ago, so no need to document that. But with the ecosystem and with working with so many other people, you really need to kind of build for the stranger, build for the guy who just found your, uh, your module just on NPM browsing. Um, because that's what people before you have kind of done. That's how. That's why the module you're using is so kind of well thought out. Uh, there's a lot of just kind of thought put into that and the ecosystem as a whole. So whenever possible, try and write modules for others to use. Write your code for others to read if they need to dig in. It'll only mean more patches, more pull requests, uh, more issues, just greater involvement if you make your code easy to understand, read, and use. 
And uh, last, embrace the community. Um, like I said, it's an amazing community. You guys are all here. This is awesome. Um, but also, like, on GitHub, NPM, people are always always talking to each other, talking about stuff. Um, the IOJS thing is pulling everyone back into Node, which is great. Um, just don't be afraid to reach out to people on Twitter, anything. Really embrace the community, both for your sake and for everyone's sake. You'll really enjoy it more. Um, and yeah, most importantly, most importantly, enjoy it. Um, thank you. And then, so that's the link. Um, yeah, it's, be gentle. But um, <laughs> um, there's a lot more kind of stuff there um, that I didn't go over. Um, so yeah, check it out. Definitely let me know what you think.